So we're here with Stuart Gibbs, uh, race number 46 in the Mini Challenge, driving the JCW. Um, so Stuart, you've been racing since last year, since 2017, and uh, how'd you get on last year? Yeah, I did okay. Uh, obviously, as everybody knows, it was all new to me. The deal was put together probably three days before the start of the season, so I turned up at Alton Park, looked at the car and was like, okay, this is exciting. Um, I didn't know any tracks, didn't do no testing, so everything was, it was a real hard upward curve last season, but I did okay. I mean, out of 35 cars, I was 20th overall, and I was only eight points off of 18th. So, considering I didn't know any tracks or the car or nothing else, I thought I did really well. That's pretty good. So, have you done any racing before? Yeah, I was. Uh, I used to do rallycross in Germany, which uh, is, as everybody knows, is totally different. It's half tarmac, half grass. You slide the car. The cars are totally different. It's it's not circuit racing. So, you know, as much as I've done racing before, where I was working my way up and I was winning everything, and then it stopped because obviously I was in the forces and I had to come back to England. Um, I'm a novice. You're basically starting as a novice. I can't walk around thinking. I'm the big I am, because you're not. You're a total novice, and there's 34 other guys or girls that are better or more experienced or just as up for it as you are. So, yeah, it's very competitive. And how did you find out about the Mini Challenge? Uh, pure luck. Um, I saw an advert from Accelerate for uh, doing Brick Car, and I just, I just rang the number and spoke to Oliver, Oliver Shepherd, and uh, we, were, we were talking, and the next thing you know, I was talking to Anthony and Justina, and... Mini UK wanted me in the championship because obviously I'm an amputee. Uh, it's, you know, um, yeah. And after a good long chat, I thought it's the right place to be. Family, family orientated, friendly. Um, yeah, nobody sort of walks around and treats you like dirt. Everybody treats you fairly. If you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong. Then it's forgotten about. And uh, yeah, and yeah, that's why I came to the Mini Challenge. So you mentioned you're an amputee. Yeah. How do you find driving the car? Because has it got any funny controls or? Any special controls on it? No, my car, which surprises a lot of people, my car is exactly the same setup as everybody else's. So I use the clutch for starting, um, going into second gear from the start. Um, I do struggle a little bit on uh, at Brands Hatch or Alton Park on the hill because I can't, I can't get all three pedals to work together because it's a little difficult. So I end up spinning the wheels up quite a lot, which is unfortunate. But that's going to be changed this season. Um, I can't tell you why, but you'll see soon. Uh, this, I've, I've got a new sponsor in OBP Motorsport and their products, and some of their products are going to be in my car, which is great news. Um, but yeah, I drive the car exactly the same as everybody else. The only difference is I can't left foot brake, which I used to be able to do. And sometimes you feel it in your leg when you're going around fast corners, but it's not an excuse, it's just, that's the way it is. So you don't have to use the clutch to change gear? No, it's a sequential gearbox. So, although some drivers will use the clutch to come down the box to help save the gearbox. The gearboxes are actually designed as a sequential box that you only use it from the start up into second gear. Once you're in second, that's it. You don't need... When The best way to describe it, if you're watching a motorsport event and you watch the cars and you hear a lot of popping, the popping is when the gear changes are going on without the clutch. So how do you find the JCW Mini? Uh, great fun. But a lot of people look at the car and think, oh, it's only a Mini. You know, it's got a spoiler on it, it's, that's easy. And then they get in it and have a go, and then they've got a smile from ear to ear, unless they've buried it in the gravel trap, because they're extremely difficult to set up. They are very twitchy. Um, they're a car that you can take past the limit, but if you go too far, they're, they're not very forgiving. They will throw you off. Um, you have a lot of difficulty in getting heat into the rear tyres, which sometimes is a, a real pain. Um, so during qualifying, you'll sometimes go out and do a few laps. You'll come in, and that's what you're seeing, is people swapping the front to the rears, just so there's heat in the rears. Um, there's a lot of setup on these minis. There is the closest thing to a touring car that's, I think, personally, that's out there that's not a touring car. Um, so you can, you can play around with the suspension, the camber, the pressures. There's so much to do to get the best performance out of the car. And that's what tees up a lot of people and interests so many people to come into the championship because it's a good, a good learning curve if you want to go to touring cars or tin tops in the future. What team are you with in the Mini Challenge? I'm with uh, 
Accelerate, who run quite a number of cars, um, but they don't spread themselves too thinly. So you have four cars to a garage, and you have your own mechanic, and then there's a head mechanic. And it's not a case of nobody's approachable, don't come and talk to me. Everybody talks to everybody, everybody's really busy. And if there's a problem with somebody else's car, it's not a case of, oh, well, it's not my car. Everybody mucks in. The drivers share data, the drivers will help each other or even offer advice. It's a real friendly atmosphere. And obviously there's independents who run as well and other teams, but it is a real friendly atmosphere at Accelerate. And, and that's down to Anthony and Justina and, and the guys who work for Accelerate. Well, let's find out about Stuart Gibbs. So what's your background? I was born in Cornwall, sunny Cornwall. Um, I wanted to join the Navy and ended up joining the Army. Uh, I moved away from Cornwall in 1988 and I was in the forces for 14 years. And then I lived in Bristol and I've, all the rest of it. And then I've just now bought a house back in Cornwall, so I've done a full circle and gone back home. But yeah, I was in the forces for 14 years. I was in operations in Belfast, in Ireland, Bosnia, Kuwait, uh, Afghanistan and certain other places. Uh, it was a great experience. It was a, an amazing experience, to be honest. Um, but, you know, there comes a time when you think well, it's time to stand on your own two feet, excuse the pun, and, you know, see what civilian life is like. And it is totally different. It's not the same. But some people deal with it, some people don't. Um, I've done a numerous amount of different jobs, driven explosives all over Europe, um, been a doorman, you know, silly jobs. But at the end of the day, my dream job was to do this. And obviously, when I had the motorcycle accident, uh, I thought that was over. And then when I joined Blesma, who were a, a charity that helped ex-veterans and soldiers with bad injuries, they told me to turn a negative into a positive. So that's when I started looking into it again and getting myself motivated. And now I'm here, I've done a season and looking forward to the second one. Well, thanks for talking to us, Stuart. No worries. And we'll see you on the 31st of March at Auckland Park. Raring to go and looking forward to uh, challenging for the title. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.